All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of being worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his final messenger sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect the highest levels of manners and morals. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon him, upon his companions and all of his righteous and true followers until the day of judgment. I will start with verse number 70 in Surah Al-Anfal, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Ya ayyuhan nabi, qul li man fi aydikum min al-asra, i ya'lam illahu fi qulubikum khayran, yu'tikum خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So this verse is, though that it starts with a command to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it is a call, we all know, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي means, O oh, the Prophet of Allah. قُلْ لِمَنْ فِي أَيْدِيكُمْ مِنَ الْأَسْرَى That tell those captives, of the war that you have under your um, command or under your capacity and control. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is indeed the one who knows what we conceal and what we share outwardly and look look into this verse carefully that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave the matter in the hand of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam ولكن الله سبحانه وتعالى استمال قلوبهم بهذه الآية ودعاهم إلى التوبة so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact referred the matter 
or he kept the matter in his own hands. So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to pass this message to the captives that or who are in in the hands of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the companions and let them know that if they show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet sallallahu doesn't know what's in the hearts of these people, right? They don't know. The Prophet sallallahu didn't know who were the munafiqeen. He didn't know who were the hypocrites in Medina until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed their names to him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu to tell the captives that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees in your heart khayr, meaning acceptance of Islam and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is the reward? يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you that which is much, much better than what was taken away from you, from the dunya, from the position, from the wealth, and from the properties. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ And on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising them forgiveness. As we know, Islam that Islam basically wipes away everything that's before it. Probably some of us are wondering what's the relationship of this verse and this topic to what's happening in, in the current days, or I should say in the past 50 days or so. Since October 7th, my brothers and sisters in Islam, there has been reports or confirmed reports that there are 3,325 captives taken by the Zionist Israeli government. And they are in the jails under very severe and humane and brutal conditions. This is on top of the 5,500 captives, the majority of whom were women and children that are already there. So in other words, we're talking about 8,000, over 8,000 people. أكثر من ثمانية آلاف من الأسرى فيهم كثير من النساء والأطفال and amongst them are also many, many women. Majority of, of them are women and children. And I'm go going to be sharing with you quickly, my brothers and sisters, the statement of one of the captives who has been released recently in this exchange uh, of, of uh, releasing the captives. A man named Ramzi al-Abbas, when he arrived to his house in the city or the town of Silwan, he told the reporters and the media personnel who were present, and of course his family and everybody, friends and neighbors, he said that, I feel extremely terribly bad because I left behind in the prison of Sahra and Naqab the desert of al naqab which is known to be one of the mo most brutal Israeli prisons. He said that I left behind over 3,000 people of my brothers and sisters and children. And he went on to describe the situation and he said that there are morning and afternoon meals not to eat meals of whipping them and beating them. And he described also, he goes on and he says that they, he knows people in there from the Palestinian captives who have their legs broken or their arms broken or their hands broken or sometimes even their skull broken because of the brutal beating. And he goes on and he says that it reaches to an extent that they strip us sometimes from our clothes just to humiliate us. And sometimes they leave us just in, in our undergarments, in underwears, in rooms that are 
pretty much freezing. So we can sleep like that during the night. And he also goes on and he says that as for a sub was as for basically swearing and using foul language, swearing at Allah, swearing at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, belittling and putting down the Muslims and the Palestinians and the Arabs, he said that is a norm. We hear it 24 7. And it reaches to an extent that they sometimes they bring the Quran, they step on it in front of these, I won't call them prisoners because prisoner means that they have done something wrong. These captives. Now, my brother and sister in Islam, I gave you a picture of what is happening in the Israeli prisons, right? And probably you have heard, Rubama Samiatum and Tiflain, Aladina. Two children, eight, eight years old. His name is Adam Samir Al Ghul, and 15 year old Basil Suleiman Abu Al Wafa. They both were shot by Israeli snipers when they were playing on the streets after they were dismissed from school. This happened just two days ago. Even though that there is so-called humanitarian pause or truce in Gaza, the brutal invasion, I will call it, and also, um, uh, subhanAllah, yani the brutal attacks of the Israeli troops on our brothers and sisters in the West Bank continue. On the other hand, my brothers and sisters in Islam, and this is the whole point of bringing the topic of Hukuk al-Asra, the rights of the captives. We look, and I'm sure that most of us have seen in many media channels, media outlets, how the Israeli prisoners, the women and the children, when they were being released, by the Palestinian resistance, uh, by the men and the women who are resisting this brutal occupation. I'm sure that we have seen the smiles on their faces as they were giving farewell to the people who kept them captive and how they were thanking them and how actually we have seen also images of some of them embracing the fighters who kept them captives, the Palestinians. And these images, my brothers and sisters, some might say that, well, that could be a Photoshop, right? Photo app. But these people are not, they are not what? They are not politicians like our politicians. They are not going around to basically beautify their image. Because you cannot, you actually cannot win the heart of people unless and until, and we're not talking about one day or two days, we're talking about over 50 days. And they are talking about the fact that our brothers and sisters who are resisting the, the, the brutal Israeli occupation they have dealt in the most humane manner with these captives to the extent that they did not separate the mother and the child they did not separate family members from each other they did not even and listen to this carefully i'm sure you have seen the young lady who walked out from one car or one vehicle and went to the red cross vehicle with her dog and the dog was still perfectly healthy and alive. So s some would wonder, where are, where are they bringing this from? Why are they so kind? Why are they treating the captives so gently and so kindly? Where are they, is this, is this some sort of a, you know, a political move or what, what is it exactly? Where is it stemming out from? Min ayna lahum hadha? الجواب إخواني وأخواتي في الله 
هَذَا مَا عَلَّمَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم This is what Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم taught his companions, his sahaba, his followers, those who follow the tradition and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم هَذَا هُوَ دَيْدَنُهُمْ هَذَا هُوَ دَيْدَنُهُمْ This is what we believe in and this is what we practice. There are so many stories that I can share with you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, but I will share with you the beautiful story of Thumama ibn Athal al-Hanafi, Malik al-Yamama. Thumama ibn Athal, he was known to be the king of Yamama. Yamama is the central area of the Arabic Peninsula. In the sixth year of the Hijrah, and I will be quick in this, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when the truce of Hudaybiyah was basically struck between the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions, between Muslims and the Mushrikeen of Quraysh, after they got beaten in three battles, Badr, Uhud, and Khandaq, they thought, the Mushrikeen thought that this is a good idea to enter a truce, and they did. So Muhammad Sallallahu seized the opportunity and he wrote to many kings. Uh, and emperors, and amongst them was with uh, Thumama ibn Athal. كتب إليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. فلم يكترث. So this man, Thumama, the king of Yamama, he did not care what the Prophet wrote to him, inviting him and his people to Islam. In fact, he did the opposite. He actually sought every opportunity to kill some of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and so did he. And he actually even tried, he attempted to make a plot to kill the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Why? Because of the propaganda of the Quraysh media. Because of how much he heard about the Prophet Sallallahu And how they described him as a liar, as a magician, as a man who is breaking families and so on and so forth. And then subhanAllah, one day he decided to go do Umrah, not according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu but he decided to do Umrah according to what? According to the days of Jahiliyyah. And he wanted to slaughter sheep uh, and camels for their idols. And when he was near Mecca, there was a Sari, an expedition of the Prophet Sallallahu companions. They saw the man and they took him captive and they brought him to Medina and they don't know who he is. So they brought him and they tied him to one of the, the, the pillars of the mosque of the Prophet And then when the Prophet came out in the morning and he saw him from far, he looked at the companion and he said, Do you know who did, who did you bring as a captive? He said, this is Thumama. This is the king of Yamama. And the Prophet did not talk to him that day. He went to his family right away. And before he did, he told the companions, Ahsinu Isara. Be kind to him. Be kind to this man. And then the Prophet Muhammad went to his family and he said, That whatever you have in, in, in our homes, gather it and, and send it to Thumama to feed him. And he also commanded his family to take his she camel and to basically offer the milk in the, in the morning and in the afternoon to Thumama. Then the Prophet Sallallahu the next day he started going to Thumama ibn Athal and he started asking him, Ma indaka ya Thumama? What do you have? Huh? What do you say? So the man responded to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, In taqtul, taqtul the dam. That if you kill me, then you're killing somebody who actually yeah, killed many of your companions. I have blood in my hand. He was a man. He was a man. And then he went on and he said, وَإِن تُحْسِنْ تُحْسِنْ إِلَى And if you do good, تُكْرِمْ عَلَى شَاكِرْ And if you do good, basically, you will be doing good to somebody who's thankful, who appreciates people. And if you want money, to free me, he said, Sell, أُعْطِيكَ مِنَ الْمَالِ مَا شيت. I will give you as much as you want. So the Prophet ﷺ smiled at him and left. 
Second day, same thing. Third day, same thing. And then the Prophet ﷺ told the companions, أَطْلِقُوا صَرَاحَ ثُمَامًا Set him free. Didn't ask him a question. Didn't put any condition. The Prophet ﷺ let him go. Thumam ibn Athal, he went to the outskirts of Medina and in, into a garden of one of the dwellers of Medina. فَاَخْتَزَلَ فَأَحْسَنَ الْإِغْتِسَالِ So he did ghusl and he cleansed himself and he came back to the messenger of Allah. So he came back to the masjid and he said, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ أَنَّكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ He embraced Islam. And he started telling the Prophet Wasallam that by Allah, your face was the, the most hated face on earth to me. And now your face is the most beloved face to me. And your, your deen, your religion, your path was the worst in my eyes. And today it is the most beloved path to me. And your balad, your city, your town, this Medina that you are living in was the worst city in my eyes and now it is the most beloved one and then he took the permission of the Prophet to go and, and do the Umrah and the Prophet taught him how to do Umrah and when he came to Mecca and I want you to pay attention to this my brothers and sisters so you see كَيْفَ أَنَّ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْأَسْرَى لَهُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ ثِمَارَ عَظِيمًا how that doing good according to the Sunnah of the Prophet and teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing good to the captives has its fruitful subhanallah results. He enters Mecca alone and he starts doing talbiyah out loudly, first person to challenge Quraysh and he says, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik out, out loudly, publicly. So Quraysh, they gathered and they wanted to, some of their sufaha, they wanted to kill him and then the leaders, when they saw who he is, they said, Mah, Take it easy. Do you know who is this man? If you kill him, we are doomed. We are destroyed. Because they are on the way and, and they are basically the provider of the what? Uh, of the wheat uh, that we make bread with. So Samama stood there and he did his Umrah, he did his Tawaf and he threatened them and he said, By Allah, if you do anything to the Messenger of Allah, nothing nothing of our crops will reach you. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم السلام بسم الله كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين الصفا ثم ما بعد. Islam, my brothers and sisters, and I'll try to wrap this up quickly. Protected the honor of the captives regardless of their faith, regardless of their religion, especially if they are women and children. And doing good to the captives in Islam, my brothers and sisters, and this may shock some of us, it is actually an act of worship. Ibadah, yutaqarrabu biha ila Allah azza wa jal. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi surat al-insan al-ayat al-thamina wa yut'imoon al-ta'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yateeman wa asira. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the true believers who are on the path of the Prophet sallallahu that they feed three categories of people. And, and, and look carefully that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the captives in the same category as, as, of, as, as the two other people who are the miskin, the needy, and also the orphans. And he goes on and he says, Ala hubbihi, that the companions of the Prophet وسلم, actually did this, subhanAllah. Tabbaku hadil ayah bi hadafiriha. Qala ibn Kathir, Qala ibn Abbas, kana asrahum yawma idin mushrikeen. Wa yashhad ala hadha anna Rasul sallam amara ashabahu yawma badrin an yukrimu al-asara. Fakanu yuqaddimunahum ala anfusihim fi al-ta'am. This is where our brothers and sisters in Palestine are learning it from. This is where it came from. That the Prophet ﷺ told the companions, told the Ansar and the Muhajirin, my brothers and sisters, we need to learn our faith. He told them that the captives that you have after the Battle of Badr, he said, make sure that you give them food first. And give them from that which is dearer to you. And I'll conclude my brothers and sisters in Islam. 
to show my how that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah <coughs> changes subhanallah the hearts of the believers from, from taking revenge into being so kind and, and, and dedicated to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a man who is the brother of Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu ardah. He mentions that subhanallah uh, that he was in, in the captivity. He was in the captivity and, and, um, and he says that nafarun min al-ansar, that some men from the ansar, they were actually subhanallah, kanu yatuna bi ta'am, fayu'thirunahu ala anfusihim bil khubz, liannahu kana nadiran. So they used to basically give him, the brother of Musa ibn Umair, who was a mushrik at that time. They used to give him the bread. Do you know why? Because the bread was something very rare and it, it was extravagant, uh, like the meat nowadays. So they used to give him the bread and they used to eat the dates. And he says, he goes on and he says, that I start feeling ashamed because they are actually giving me something that they all, they themselves actually would love to eat. And this is exactly what we heard from the captives, my brothers and sisters of, of the Israeli uh, people, the women and the children, that our brothers and sisters who are resisting the occupation. Rijal al atharuhum ala anfusihim. And this is Islam. This is how Islam teaches us, my brothers and sisters, to be kind, to be merciful, to learn how the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, dealt with the captives, to either set them free without anything, or to take some sort of a return for it, as the Prophet did with the people of, or, or the Asra of Badr. Some of them couldn't afford to feed themselves. So what did the Prophet do? He asked them to teach the children of the believers how to write and read. What a great message. What a great subhanAllah deen we have. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Asalullah Rabbil Arsh al -Azim. أن يوفقنا وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضى صلوا على الرسول الكريم والمبعوث رحمة العالمين فقد أمركم الله بذلك في كتاب الكريم فقال عز من قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وارض اللهم عن الأربعة الخلفاء الأئمة الحنفاء أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وأنصار وصحاب نبيك أجمعين وأنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك وإحسانك يا رب العالمين اللهم صل إخواننا وأخواتنا في أرض فلسطين اللهم صلوا على عدائك وعدائهم أجمعين اللهم ثبت أقدامهم اللهم اجمع كلمتهم ووحد صفوفهم اللهم سدد رميهم اللهم وفقهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم أنزل عليهم سكينة من عندك اللهم تقبل شهداءهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وداوي جرحاهم اللهم استر عوراتهم وآمن روعاتهم اللهم استر عوراتهم وآمن روعاتهم اللهم آوي شريدهم اللهم آوي شريدهم اللهم آوي شريدهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين واخرجنا وإخواننا وأخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل بقاع الأرض من بينهم سالمين غانمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم الله الله